Good morning. Uh, I'm Lance Davis. I do software engineering at Giza. Uh, today, I'll be joined by uh, Brandon Case from Mina Protocol, uh, Ben Lipschitz from Matter Labs, uh, Zero K Punk from Orbiter Finance, and Diego Kingston from Lambda Class, and we'll be talking about X factors in ZK, uh, particularly in hardware, research, and software. Uh, I just want to ask first, describe you all's uh, tech stack. We can start with Ben. Sure. Um, so, look, we are ZK roll up, right? So there is a lot of work that goes into proof production, proof generation, verification as well. So that's, um, I guess, the main, the most important, the most relevant bit for this discussion. Happy to double click on uh, a number of aspects of this as as as, as, we, as we continue. Maybe zero K punk next. I'm Zero Great Punk, and I'm from Obita Finance. And Obita Finance is a cross roller bridge, and we, uh, there's a very basic function we need to implement is the how to validate the transaction of the layer twos in, on Ethereum. Yeah, and our ZK stack is including some ZK, uh, hybrid ZK stack architecture with the Plunky 2 and, and uh, uh, some, some, some snacks. <coughs> Uh, like growth testing, yeah, that's, that's Well, hello, we have our library, it's Lambda Works. We try to add all the different types of snarks. We are an engineering and creative powerhouse, and we also have the pleasure of working with many of the amazing teams in the environment, such as CK Sync and Mina, so we get to see also a lot of work uh, going on, on their stacks, and we also can, can contribute and use them, so we get lots of cool ideas from, from them. And yeah, I'm super excited to, to be here discussing all these things with you. Hi. Um, yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have our own proof system uh, called Kimchi, uh, which is uh, you know, Plonkish, and it uh, uses an inner product argument. Um, and it's over the pasta curves. Um, on top of that, we have a recursion layer called pickles. Um, and uh, you know, our, our, our core system is very flexible, so uh, we have an instantiation for Mina, and we're able to instantiate it um, with like BN254 and KZG, uh, so it's efficiently verifiable on Ethereum. Um, and then we have a, a framework for writing circuits that um, exposes kind of the guts of the proof system and lets you do custom gate stuff and, and all, you know, recursion and, and, and fun things um, called O1.js, uh, and that's uh, a framework in um, TypeScript. Sweet, it's great hearing from you all. Uh, so we know that, you know, the finished products typically take a lot of time. Uh, would love to hear more about where you all started and how you all ended up, you know, where you are. Would love to hear more about uh, ZK Singh's journey to Boojum, for example. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe Brandon with uh, sure. Kimchi and Pickles. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so our, our stack evolved a lot. So we, we started um, in 2017 uh, on, on our work. So uh, in the beginning, it was just, you know, Groth16. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then we moved to GrothMaller17 um, with, uh, <laughs> with, like, uh, the co-recursive circuits over the MNT cycle. Um, then we, then we kind of followed state of the art as it was happening. So uh, we moved to Marlin, um, and that's the, the basis, the foundation on top of which we had like the first version of Pickles. Um, and we moved to an early like Plonkish system right before mainnet launch of, of Mina. Um, and, then, and then since then, uh, you know, we've been just adding like uh, all the bells and whistles <laughs> to, to our proof system as, as research comes out. So. Um, you know, we have like all the fancy lookup arguments, and uh, you know, we, we have like we actually have a, a more generalized proof system that we can now instantiate into Kimchi or into a, a zkVM, uh, which uh, we have like a, a MIPS ISA on top of. Um, yeah, and you know, some check, anything, anything that you want. Folding, we're also looking into. Well, in, in my case and in our case, it has been quite a long journey. 
it started like four years ago. In my case, it's funny because I don't come from cryptography. I am a chemical engineer, then turned into cryptographer. Um, and we started with uh, some of the basic proof systems. Perhaps we, we started first with Pinocchio because when we started building the library, we also wanted to learn and to make it easy for other people to learn on proof systems. Of course, a big uh, turning point was when we started building our Stark Prover uh, based on um, the great work done by, by Starkware. And then we, we just got on this journey of adding new proof systems. We got to know uh, Kimchi, which is great and has really some cool ideas. Of course, also with Bujum, we also studied it. We, we like uh, using it, working with it. So, yeah, it, and we check all the latest uh, research. We are also very excited by new developments such as uh, Circle Starks or um, Stair, which can greatly uh, boost the efficiency of um, the Fry protocol. So, yeah, we, we've been playing around a lot. And, yeah, that's it. And we started our Zig Stack about two years ago. And at that time, we want to implement some very, very, very heavy computation logic in, in the Solidity. But it, 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 it happens to some very, li very much limitation. And we started to investigate the Zig Stack at that time. We first tried some, some the growth system, growth system Zig 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 system uh, like the Circum. And and, uh, and we, we found that the ZK community commu uh, is de developing very very fast, and there are many new new technicals happen every day, uh, every week, and every month. And we we will uh, we are always uh, 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 changing up the, the newest te technology in the in the ZK community. Um, and and just uh, recently, two two years, and we uh, we we have our own ZK hybrid. Architecture of our ourselves, and it, it is about the uh, Ziggy Stack and Ziggy Snacks. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Uh, so, Butchum is a specific point uh, in this sort of continuous uh, progression, right? Continuous journey. And I just wanted to highlight maybe a few aspects of it. So, uh, the first one is the trade off between uh, getting like crazy performance improvements by like hand optimizing circuits. And keeping the keeping the code safe, right? You know, avoiding missing constraints, you know, things of that sort. So that's the one thing. Another one is hardware software core design. So with a heavy emphasis on GPU based uh, proof production, that's been like an early design decision. I think that's uh, paying off. That's that's a very interesting feature. And the third one is that uh, we sort of have less of a monolithic. Uh, approach to proving, so there is a number of machines, a number of CPU machines, GPU machines as well. So it's like, the way I would describe it is that it's less of a beefy monolithic machine approach, it's more of a mini cluster approach. And of course, that takes us further down into this parallel proving territory, and we can talk about that at length. I think we saw you know, some interesting presentations uh, in the last couple of days, even about that, and I think this is just a you know, give that will keep on giving in coming months and years. Really cool. Uh, so one thing that we know about ZK is that there are lots of bottlenecks in a lot of the proving systems that we use. You know, for example, uh, number theoretic transforms can be really slow. Uh, Multiscalar multiplications. Uh, you know, we had a great presentation last time about accelerating these things, but you know, it can be difficult to pinpoint what the exact bottlenecks in proving systems are. Uh, so I would love to ask you all, what are you all's current focus? Um, for example, maybe hardware acceleration or you know, uh, resolving bottlenecks. You can start with Brandon. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're 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 always we're always trying to push uh, performance, um, especially uh, with with our work on uh, our, our zkVM. Um, but you know, we're we're usually more focused on like the the feature side. I think that's something that's kind of like a different choice that we've taken from other projects. Um, <coughs> The, the way we think about it is, I mean, there's, there's of course like a performance uh, 
um, bar that you have to meet, and that's always increasing. Um, but you know, we've uh, what we've done with our like circuit writing framework is we've exposed these uh, like core features in the underlying proof system, and so we always want to like push those. Um, so I guess you know, think like custom gates, um, recursion uh, is, is something that we've we've always like made, made sure to focus on, and then. You know, we're we're spending some time on uh, proof system compatibility and composability now. Um, so there's there's like some work we're doing to make uh, kimchi and pickles over IPA reduce efficiently to something that can be uh, verified on EVM better, um, and sort of like making sure that other proof systems can plug in. Um, and that's that's something that we're spending like more time on than performance right now. Are you talking about like other proof systems using like pickles recursion? Or something like that. No, like any, uh, like any foreign uh, proof system. So, like, uh, you know, um, like verifying uh, Starks under pickles. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, I think that each proof system has obviously its bottlenecks. Maybe those based on elliptic curves. Probably the most expensive operation right now is MSM. In the case of Starks, you also have like. The, probably the NTT, but once it's not longer the bottleneck, you get maybe the bottleneck uh, somewhere else, like computing the constraints for the, for the air. Um, but I think that um, right now, perhaps some of the problems we have as, is that we have like lots of proof systems, but not of not all of them are like easy to verify in Ethereum. So that forces us like to do a lot of work on recursion, and right now, it's it's hard to do recursion with some of the proof systems. We need like maybe to get like some improvements on, on like pr uh, proving the verification of hashes, to to make a, like a stark recursion like much easier. Luckily, I, I am super confident. After Shahar's talk on Circle Starks, I think that it has an amazing pr uh, proving power, uh, and yeah, I, I think also it's really important to add new features and things. So I think that the work we, Brandon, are doing is awesome, um, and yeah, I think that we we need maybe to have a way of uh, then converting several proofs into just one type of proof and then use easily recursion to be able to verify them maybe more efficiently in Ethereum, given that we have right now lots of uh, constraints on, the, on that side. I was going to ask Diego, do you think that field operations and FFTs will still be a major bottleneck after Circle Starks? Yeah, that, that is to say, if you have like more computing power, then you are going to ask for more things. You, you, you want to prove like more complex things. And of course, they they will end up dominating. So uh, I don't know. Yesterday we we had at CK Summit this talk on we want to prove uh, Ethereum blocks. So if you have more power, you want to do more things. And so the bottleneck never never stops. Gotcha. And the bottleneck of to to our teams is is the, always the proof time and the and the verif verification cost of the of the proof, and we we started in, in, we started investigating to the uh, GPU accelerators for our proof, proof systems, and we we ha we have our own solutions for the Plunky two, and and also recently we we have a uh, we have a new published version of the uh, rapid snack of the of of the GPU version uh, 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 by using the uh, icicle icicle GPU lip. Yeah, and we also we also we also have some have some optimization on the on the on the on the circuit, yeah, like the lookup lookup in the CAC two five six, and also we we will have some have some have our parallelized parallelized proving architecture, uh, like the like the dividing the 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 large circuit into small circuit, and by using the recursion proofs. That is. 
Uh, so just a few things to add. So first, I think proof system interop is going to get pretty big in the next year or so. I think that's very interesting, and we are looking. There are a couple of projects we have ongoing in that space. The second thing is that, I mean, my perspective is that um, a lot of these things uh, come down to what you believe the right hardware software separation should be uh, over time, right? And I think we have the opinion that we'd like to get to a point where we are opening up the proof production, proof generation pipeline to more participants, more players uh, in the spirit of decentralization, of course, as well. And if we are sort of operating within a, a proven market over time, uh, then uh, Allowing, allowing hardware makers, hardware manufacturers to participate on their own terms and figuring out the hardware part of that puzzle, I think is well warranted given that they have every incentive to compete, to participate and be compensated, right? This is basically eating your own dog food, which is uh, kind of a nice situation to be in as long as we can uh, keep providing comp um, competitive um, a sort of proof system artifacts, let's say, and then uh, hardware manufacturers can do uh, some of the heavy lifting on the, you know, on that side of the divide. I think that's actually uh, something that we'd like to encourage because my belief is that so long as that there is enough, so long as there is enough competition uh, on the hardware side as well as, of course, on the proof system side. Again, like we saw the announcement from Andreessen yesterday, Jolt, right? We've been tracking that for quite a while, and without a doubt, there'll be you know interesting things coming out of projects like Binus and a bunch of others as well in the next you know months or two even. Um, but my point is that uh, as long as you create a framework, a situation where you have uh, competition, natural competition uh, within the space of hardware makers, it will lead to a situation where proof production is not only getting faster. And of course, it would be lovely to have real-time proof uh, generation, as was outlined in the talk from Justin, Justin Drake yesterday only, right? Uh, but uh, even if it's faster than now, and of course more affordable, these are the kinds of savings that we'll be able to pass on to the end user, thereby reducing the fees longer term and so on and so forth. So the key point here is like, what's the right breakdown between what we produce um, as a roll-up and what's done by hardware makers, and I'd love to see longer-term competition that leads to the kinds of results we cannot hit in software alone. That's a, that's a really great point. Uh, there's a lot of innovation happening in the space over a short amount of time. I mean, we have, uh, like Ben said, Lasso with huge lookups, uh, ZK proving ASICs, lots of different uh, innovations on every proving system, but I want to ask you all, what do you think is the next step function in uh, ZK proving systems, uh, whether it may be a hardware innovation, um, a protocol innovation, any ideas? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think uh, maybe it's, you know, it's, it, it's always hard to predict the future. Um, I think definitely like performance is, is the main category. So, so yeah, like hardware or, or coming up with new like innovative ways to, to work with proof systems. I, I think it's interesting to review like the step functions that we've seen in the past. Um, so like going from, you know, just uh, early ZK snarks to a world where there's infinite recursion in ZK snarks is like, uh, like that, that innovation was a catalyst for the creation of MENA. Um, which you know we're excited about, uh, and then and then um, and then like Planck was the next big thing, um, uh, because like it, it sort of created this explosion of uh, you know cool uh, techniques that you could add, um, and then and then yeah like lookups is is the the hot thing these days and with with the, the Jolt work. So I I think but you know proof systems now they're like they can do all the things that we want to do. And so I, I guess like we, we are getting to the stage where efficiency is becoming maybe the, the next space. Yeah, um, I agree with, with Brandon. Another thing that I would like to see is uh, lower memory requirements right now for some computations, especially for, for recursion, you need like a lot of memory. And that, of course, limits the kind of things user, users can do. I'd like to see that we have like more efficient VMs, maybe that we can run on uh, consumer and hardware for like more or less complex computations. 
And I think that maybe, of course, hardware acceleration is going to play a major role, and I'd like to see all the new cool tricks and developments we, uh, you have in this area. But also, there are like several protocol changes. Uh, I think that, uh, for example, Fribenius can be really interesting. Uh, Circle Starks, I'd like to see it once it's fully optimized. And of course, maybe we can get something better re regarding like folding schemes, which will be like uh, very important to keep the, the, the memory requirements really low. Uh, and yeah, I'd like to see like ma many, many developments. And of course, it's important to have this integration between the teams, keeping this uh, open source spirit for collaboration and all that. And we can get like really cool results and things that will benefit and make the pie larger for all of us. Currently, and we th we think the uh, um, we, we think if uh, we think uh, uh, if we ask, if if we sorry and, and and our team has put some um, many efforts on the on the triple acceleration and it it did have uh, some good results. So, so in, in my opinion, and we if it, in my opinion and. Uh, the GPU acceleration will 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 help us a lot for the for the for the prover performance in for the for the short time or the, or the in the in the mid mid middle long term, yeah. Uh, look, I have a few personal favorites when it comes to the things that we already mentioned, like you know lower memory consumptions and practical IVC come to mind. I mean. Yeah, I'm quite partial to, you know, lookups on steroids, but maybe these are just personal favorites and that's that. Kind of, I actually wanted to make more of a meta point here. So here's the meta point, which is uh, the way these, uh, the amount of work that uh, proof system creation, construction, maintenance takes, uh, it requires fairly sizable teams and people commit themselves in every sense of the word to both the you know creation and upkeep of these systems, right? These are significant software and sometimes hardware artifacts. And it's sort of difficult to move on, if you will, right? Once you've committed yourself and you've like planted your flag and this is, you know, uh, th there's a very good chance that you'll continue just going with the flow, if you will, and improving what you have, right? And it's very difficult to say like, ah, aha, like, you know, there's this thing from, uh, like this Joel thing from Andreessen and we should just all, you know, run towards that, right? Because, you know, people are committed and it's quite difficult to change your plans and if you're in that situation. And that's actually fun fundamentally what somewhat slows things down if you think about it, right? You know, certain things linger on beyond maybe their utility, right? I'm not pointing fingers or anything like that. This is just a meta point. And what I also wanted to say is that market-driven mechanisms, right? If we get closer to uh, proven markets with properly aligned incentives, you know, and just to plug for what we presented yesterday at ZK Summit, we had a paper on um, incentive design mechanisms designed for proven markets. And if you align things properly, so to speak, then there's a chance that uh, ideas that are currently viable, currently competitive, and approaches to proving that are viable and competitive and profitable, well, they'll just na naturally linger on longer, right? They'll stay on. And the ones that are not so competitive, well, market mechanisms, the invisible hand and all that, well, they'll not uh, do so well, right? And so uh, part of the challenge at the moment, and I think this is where we can look for step function, is that we are sort of in a slow phase, if you will, where ideas take a while to materialize into software and hardware artifacts, and then those take, uh, I don't know, a year or two or three uh, until these things are proven or disproven. And there are faster ways to progress as an ecosystem uh, through these market mechanisms that I described. Wonderful. Uh, you, you bring up another great point, is uh, there's so much research in the space coming out, and oftentimes it's hard to decide what to actually implement. Uh, would love to, one, hear you all's strategy on implementing research into uh, production level code, and then also, what is the decision making process between you know, seeing really good research come out and implementing it in a proving system. 
Yeah, so our, uh, our, our cryptography team, um, the, way, the way that we structure it is we don't, we don't have any uh, pure researchers, um, and I guess we don't have any like, pure implementers. Uh, everyone is, everyone's doing both. Um, we, have a, we have a strong like, prototype culture, so um, if, you, if you see something interesting, uh, implement it in a hacky way, get something working, and then, uh, and then maybe you know, some percentage of the time, that's it, like we throw it out. Um, and, and then other times, it's like, okay, this is, this is something interesting, this can work. Um, this can you know, improve, uh, add some new features or improve performance in a big way, um, so uh, let's like, Throw it out because it's a prototype, and then make it real. Um, the the our, our team, you know, always stays up to date on the latest uh, papers and and you know announcements and things that are coming out. And then it's it's just like a, a case by case basis. So you know we have a good understanding of what our proof system uh, can support, what it, you know how it works, and so we just make judgment calls, um, you know, in in real time as as stuff comes out. Yeah, in our case, we always try to keep up with uh, all the latest developments. Of course, we have like new papers almost every day, new ideas, and it's hard to, like to to keep track of everything and try to implement everything. Uh, we always have a focus on delivery, so we we try to use things that are like uh, proven. Of course, we also like experimenting. And we have a, a team that uh, builds Lambda Works, and there we try to uh, toy with uh, all, all, all the new tricks. And we also look at uh, what other teams are doing, test their proof systems, see what works, what doesn't. And we try to iterate on that. We try to also explain what we think works, what doesn't. Um, but uh, it also depends on, on the needs uh, we have in, in, in our projects, maybe we see that we need to like to reduce, I don't know, memory consumption and maybe, okay, this, um, this research is good maybe for th that point or we need to go faster on, on field elements. Okay, what can we do to improve that? It depends mostly on, on the needs we, we have or what we envision will be a bottleneck uh, soon and well, we try to work on that. In, in our team, and uh, we don't have the specific the cryptographers or the specific engineers, and and uh, we, we will feed any news about the uh, ZK communicate from 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 everywhere, and we will update our knowledge every day, every time, and yeah, and and when when it's a very cool ideas come out, and we will. We, in our, our team, we will, we will have, a, have a new discussion about this and we will try to figure out how it works and if that makes sense. And we will try to uh, uh, make some POC of, the, of, the, of this, this idea and, we will, and like, just like with some, some very easy sample, very easy simple script like the Python, we, we try, try to implement it and yeah, just, 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 just for how, uh, figure out how it, how it works. And, and actually, actually, we 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 will not uh, uh, in, uh, we will, uh, sometimes 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 if the if the news if the new newest research result is is stable or the for for the production, and we will try to quickly put it into our production production and yeah with, with the same with, with the same rhythm of the community. So first, uh, you know, the speed and the vibrancy with which ideas are circulated and uh, borrowed or exchanged is astounding in this space, to me at least, right? I think there's LLMs and then there's this space, and I don't know what the distant third might be, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really quite amazing to see, right? I mean, you know, research papers being dissected the next day, like, I don't know too many other domains where that happens. Uh, so that's that's the positive in my mind. Uh, a couple of negatives as well, which is one is that we don't have a very good way to hybridize proof systems, right? We have a couple of ideas that we are sort of throwing around, but it's really far from 
through hybridization. So I think some of the needs we alluded to before in terms of proof system interrupt and you know growth 16 wrapping and things like that will give us get us a little bit closer to that over time, but it's still not the same. Like if I wanted to have a little bit of folding and a little bit of plunky fry, then like I don't know, right? So so like what do I do? I have some ideas, but they're not particularly excellent ideas, at least at the moment. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is that, uh, that I think is sort of a pet peeve of mine in that uh, benchmarking, like the bar for benchmarking is actually quite low, frankly, in this space. I did like many years of performance and, opti uh, performance and optimization work in the past, and it's like the idea that you can just like, oh, here's my result on, uh, here's my number on like, I don't know, Shout to 56 doesn't quite cut it in most domains, right? Like if I had, I don't know, Uniswap on a bottle and that's my representative workload, I'd be a lot happier, right? If everybody was like reporting numbers on that, for example, right? So I think the, yeah, the approach to measurements needs to be improved. Wonderful. Um, I know we're at time. So I wanted to thank you all so much for this uh, panel. Hope everybody enjoyed it and hope you're having a great ZK Accelerate.